going to uh, downtown St. Louis to look at the Mississippi, which is about a mile wide at that point. Um, and it is pretty awe-inspiring. Um, and then I'm a city girl, so I also think of things like the Chicago River, or the, the Charleston, Boston, or the Thames, or the Sun. But as I was preparing to talk about rivers today, there were two that really I just kept coming back to. Um, and the first was the Cleveland River, um, which had become so polluted that in 1969, it literally caught fire. And then the other river I come back to uh, is the Flint River in Flint, Michigan. And this has been covered uh, in the news um, quite a lot, so I'm not going to go into too much of the details. But if you recall, in April of 2014, the city leaders decided to switch the water supply for Flint, Michigan from Lake Huron to the Flint River. And the problem with that was that the Flint River was a much more polluted water source, and therefore it took a lot more to treat it. And what was used to treat it was corrosive to the pipes that was delivering the water to families' homes and businesses. Um, and instead of putting an anti-corrosive device into the water, um, the city leaders decided not to do that, which meant that um, a lot of lead um, from the Flint River went into people's homes and affected the children there especially. Um, a group of children who will now have cognitive deficiencies will have brain, kidney, and liver uh, damage, and according to a Washington Post um, study that just came out a couple of days ago, um, during the time period um, of about a little over a year, maybe a year and a half, that Flint was on this system, the number of fetal deaths in Flint ro rose by 58%. It's like 200 to 275 children who were who died in uh, before being born um, because of the lead in the pipes in Flint. And it's not coincidental, I think we would think, that Flint is one of the poorest cities in America. 45% of its residents live in poverty, 53% are African American. Of course, Flint is not unique. There are polluted water sources throughout the United States that uh, we rely on uh, for our drinking water and for other uses. Uh, and globally, the problem is even worse. Um, there are estimates, I've seen a wide range on the internet as I was preparing for this this last week, but somewhat a lower estimate is that there are 800 million people who do not have access to clean water for a variety of reasons. 160 million of them uh, get their water um, directly from the surface, from rivers, from lakes, from ponds. And there are a couple of uh, reasons why they don't have clean water. In sort of newer uh, places where industry has sort of moved into developing areas, um, we are not only outsourcing jobs, we're outsourcing pollution because those factories are not subject to the same sort of environmental standards that we have here in the U.S. Um, and one of the uh, reasons to outsource jobs is because with that, you have lower production costs because you don't have the cost of complying with environmental regulation. Um, the other issue doesn't have anything to do with industrial waste. Um, it has to do with sort of lack of proper sanitation and the contamination of water sources due to human and animal waste uh, where uh, communities don't have proper sanitation. Um, this leads to bacteria getting into a community's water source which can lead to people um, uh, uh, coming down with diarrhea uh, which you know obviously is not pleasant but if you are a child in a poor community, diarrhea can be a death sentence. Um, and there are estimates that 2,000 children per day die of diarrhea 
which is in many cases preventable if they had access to clean water. So that's the, the, the problems. Um, kind of what, as we as a community and as individuals, can we do to help solve them? Um, with respect to Flint, I think the answer is to keep talking about it. This was something that was huge in the news um, a year or so ago, probably. Um, you don't hear a lot about it anymore. Um, there was a wide outpouring of uh, charity and support for the Flint community. Um, but the problem is their issues aren't going away. The children affected in Flint are going to have um, problems for a lifetime. And we need to continue to support them and talk about uh, the issues that are going on in Flint so that they don't happen elsewhere. Um, locally, what can you do as an individual? Well, one thing you can think about what you put, uh, what you flush down your toilet, and what you put in, uh, you know, pour down your drain, and what you put on your lawn. Um, household wastes are um, uh, a terrible uh, source of uh, contamination, both in our sewers uh, and in groundwater. Um, disposing of things just like excess medicines that you, where you have, you know, a couple of pills left from a prescription. Uh, making sure that those are properly disposed of and don't get into our water source. Um, making sure that when you're going to elect officials to look at what their um, record is on the environment um, and whether or not they support um, environmental protections, both you know, with, at a local, state, and federal level. Um, I remember when I first moved to Chicago, maybe about 20 years ago, being endlessly amused by the fact that I had to choose my Metropolitan Water Reclamation District Commissioner. Um, and I was like, yeah, right. This past election, I probably spent an hour or two looking at everybody's bios. <laughs> um, I'm glad to say, I think like whoever we would have picked would have been good. They all seemed like reasonable candidates. Um, but these are the people who are making sure that our water is clean and that everybody's water is clean and well treated. And so pay attention to things like that. And on a more global scale, um, it's harder to figure out what we as, I think, individuals can do. Uh, one thing we can do is call on our elected officials, call on world leaders, um, to fund programs that are going to sort of close this gap and allow everybody in the world to have access to clean water. And also call on businesses that are doing business overseas to clean up their acts overseas um, and not do business with them, or at least pressure them um, to sort of apply the same sort of environmental controls uh, that they would have here in the US to their factories overseas. So uh, thank you very much. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city, on either side of the river, was the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. A word of God for the people.